Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jake. Just like to say thank you as usual for joining me today. Um, I hope you're having a great Friday afternoon. Oh, hello. I got a friend today. Um, I hope you're having a great Friday afternoon. Uh, my name is Jake from Umbrella IT Services, and today we're going to be talking about securing the data and systems inside of your organization by using backups, disaster recovery, and business continuity solutions. So. Before we begin, um, I've left a two-week trial link for Backblaze. That's a uh, file backup service in the description. Uh, so for those of you that are looking for a simple set it and forget it backup solution for your Mac or PC, um, you're going to be able to go ahead and click the link down below in the description and you will be able to back up all of the files on your Mac or PC for two weeks for free using Backblaze. And if you like using them, then you can continue to use them and pay them five to $10 a month, depending on your usage. So um, also if you could leave a like on the video, it really helps me out. If you wanna see more videos like this, then please subscribe to the channel. So if you have a suggestion for future videos, please leave a comment below or email us at techtips at umbrellaitservices.ca. So now that we've gotten all that stuff out of the way, um, I just wanna to talk to you guys today about backups, disaster recovery and business continuity solutions. So in my opinion, backups are on the most important parts of any organization's IT infrastructure, and it's very important to get them right. Um, I've worked with a lot of businesses that thought they had good backups, they got hit by ransomware or someone deleted a file, and it turns out their backups hadn't been verified in over a year or they weren't working the way they thought that they were, and they ended up losing hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of business information or their business went down for three to four weeks and they weren't able to work and they still had to pay like 15, 10 people's salaries while their business was recovering. So it's very important to make sure that you have a proper backup in place for your business, your staff, and yourself. So in today's video, we're going to be reviewing threats to your data, three different types of backup solutions to prevent data loss, downtime, and disruptions to your business. And then I'm going to do a very, very brief demo on how to back up your data using Google Drive and OneDrive, because I know most folks nowadays are either using Microsoft 365 for email or they're using G Suite for Gmail. So covering those two things should cover the majority of folks. And then for those of you that are not using either of those services, or you just want another layer of protection, um, Backblaze will be in the description for you. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna to talk to everybody about today is the data loss liabilities. So each division of your digital infrastructure faces a unique set of risks and liabilities. I'm um, having a Monday morning today, so excuse the stuttering. <clears throat> so uh, in terms of devices, there are a number of threats that can actually destroy the data on your device. It can take your computer down and you're not gonna be able to work today. So what I'm trying to do again is not just back up your data, but also ensure that if something happens to one of these pieces of infrastructure, you're going to be able to recover your data and get back to work as soon as possible. That's the main priority here. We wanna make sure that if you lose data, that can also be recovered, but also you're not spending a lot of time or you're out of work for a full day because you spill some coffee on a computer or because you come in one day and your stuff is encrypted from a hacker or maybe your hard drive just failed or your computer won't turn on. You should have each of these liabilities listed out and you should have a recovery policy for each of these situations. And we're gonna go into that a little bit later. So just to get started with devices, the list of liabilities are virus or ransomware infections. So I'm sure everyone here back in the days of LimeWire or just in today's world, you're able to catch viruses still fairly easily. Macs are now more susceptible to catching viruses than Windows PCs. So make sure you're using proper virus or ransomware protection there. You don't wanna come in one day and see that your computer is encrypted, so you're not gonna be able to use it. You're gonna to need to get a redundant piece of hardware or all of your data has been wiped via virus, so you're gonna to need to recover your data or your data has been compromised and now someone is going through your data, duplicating it, modifying files, that kind of stuff. So virus or ransomware can cause downtime as well as data loss. Hardware or software failure, again, I'm sure everyone has come into their computer one day at work and you have the bad Windows update or the blue screen of death on the screen. And again, you're out of work for four hours when IT tries to sort it out, or maybe you're not gonna be able to work for two hours while they get it sorted out, whatever. You wanna make sure that that is reduced down to 15 minutes or an hour because IT can just pull a spare laptop out of the back or a spare workstation, restore it and get you back to work. Um, this same sort of situation can happen with servers. So again, very important to make sure you're considering hardware or software failures. 
Security breaches, this can be physical or digital. So again, if someone gets access internally, maliciously to your server or computer, maybe a staff member, that can cause a lot of data loss or downtime. You can have an external threat come in, again, a hacker or something like that. They can come in, destroy your business, destroy your data, cause downtime. And you can also have just accidental situations like that through data loss. So I've seen a lot of the time people will think they've lost data. In reality, they just moved it to another directory. Um, maybe you thought you saved a file and you didn't, um, that kind of stuff. So data loss can also occur. And another big problem is the outdated software and hardware. So again, this kind of relates to if you've got an older hard drive, it can fail. If you've got a motherboard that's very, very old, it can fail and you can lose your data. So we want to make sure that we're considering these liabilities for our devices. So workstations, laptops, and servers when we're setting up our backups, disaster recovery, and business continuity solutions. Moving on to networks. There's a number of threats here that can cause, again, downtime or data loss, so passive network threats. And this can be things, again, like somebody is actively monitoring your network, and then they all of a sudden go ahead and disrupt your network, causing an active network threat, or things will go down. Um, you can also have a hardware or software failure. It's very important to make sure that you do not have single points of failure in your network. And you can also have communication failures that can cause downtime. So as you can see with the networks, for the most part, these things will cause downtime. They're not so much going to cause data loss. So it's very important to make sure that you are considering these liabilities and downtime with your networks. With the devices, data is a much more pertinent critical issue. With networks, it's a big concern about downtime. So if you can't get online, most of the times nowadays, you're not going to be able to do your job. Um, it's very important to make sure your networks are protected from downtime. Very important to make sure your devices are protected from data loss. Looking at cloud services, again, this very much pertains to both of these previous categories. You have to make sure that you're going to be able to access your cloud services, whether that's QuickBooks Online, Microsoft 365 email, Gmail, um, any, any sort of online tool like a CRM or, or these kind of platforms. Um, looking at the security breach side of things for cloud services, Somebody can gain access to your account and lock you out of it. That's going to cause downtime. And when they're in your account, they can modify or delete your data. That's going to cause data loss. Denial of service is when someone is going to cause you to be unable to access your cloud service provider. So again, you're going to have downtime there. Data loss from people deleting things. Data loss and downtime as you try to recover your data. Hardware and software failure. Again, if you're not able to get online because your network went down, your device is down, maybe a Microsoft server farm went down, um, you need to make sure that you've planned for Microsoft going down on their end as much as you've planned for your computer to not work either. Um, natural disasters is another big one. I remember, I think, two or three years ago now, I think like a third of the internet went down. Snapchat went down, Facebook went down, a ton of these different software applications went down uh, because there was a big storm that affected Amazon server farms. Um, and it ended up taking down like 30% of the services uh, in Western Canada and Western America for a little bit. So again, if you're building your house on someone else's lawn like G Suite or Microsoft, you need to make sure that your data is being uh, locally backed up as well. And then non-secure applications, um, if you've got uh, an app like Honey on your computer, for example, it is monitoring everything you're doing and it can uh, be a way that other hackers can uh, kind of get in through that software. Maybe you have a password with, with a program like Yahoo and they get into Yahoo's email servers, they figure out what your password is and then they try to get into your other accounts with that same password. Um, or maybe they use that application that you've given permission to access your Google Drive files. Maybe they breach that account, they go into your Google Drive through the third party application that you've allowed access to your Google Drive and now all your files are, are at risk. So again, very important to make sure you're considering that. And then ransomware can also take down your stuff. So, uh, And in terms of users, this is the biggest liability as we talked about in our information security seminar. 91% of attacks that happen on businesses and nonprofits nowadays do come from uh, social engineering attacks. So hacking the users, not hacking the technology that we've mentioned previously here. So make sure that you are not falling for any social engineering tricks. We've got another presentation up that you can review about that. I'll uh, leave a link to the description below or you can check out the channel. Um, you want to make sure that users are not causing downtime. 
You want to make sure the users are not accidentally deleting things, or if they do, they know how to go back and reverse or trace their steps using an audit. You want to make sure that they're always complying with policy. That means that no, your kid cannot install Fortnite on your work computer. I'm sorry, but it's going to cause problems for you. Uh, human error, again, usually accidental deletions or clicking on a link they shouldn't click on, that kind of stuff. And then just general negligence where people just don't care about their work devices and they just throw the laptop in their bag and then the screen gets cracked and they can't work for half a day because they need to find a monitor to plug the laptop into or they didn't realize that it was so sensitive, etc. I've seen a lot of that stuff as well. So these are the main liabilities you want to keep in mind um, that you're protecting yourself from. And if you do know of any other ones that I've missed here, again, please leave a comment below and we can address that. Now, I've used this slide more than a few times because it does show the consequences of ransomware or not having a good backup. So just to reiterate really quickly what ransomware is, someone will install malicious software inside of your computer, kind of like a virus. It will encrypt all of the files on your machines. You cannot turn the machine on and it will show you a screen that says you need to send X amount of Bitcoin or this many dollars, a ransom to a location in order to unlock your machine. So um, again, if you don't have a good backup in place, you are at the whims of these hackers. If they tell you we're gonna take two weeks to get back to you and we're gonna charge you $116,000 to get your data back, you gotta pay them. Because how are you gonna get the 15 years, five years, two years of your business back if they've encrypted all of your data? Very important to make sure that you have a good backup in place so these consequences do not happen to you. Just to really briefly go through this, because we have reviewed this before, 71% of ransomware attacks targeted small, medium business organizations in 2018 with an average ransom demand of $116,000. 60% of organizations lose access to their data for 16 days or longer after suffering a ransomware attack, and 54% of affected organizations believe their companies are too small to be ransomware targets. So this last point is probably the biggest point, and it's something that I always kind of struggle with explaining to people. Um, we've had a lot of clients that are four-person financial firms, 25-person financial firms, lawyers, bookkeepers, um, you name it, movie studio films, um, sorry, film production studios, um, and, and they all don't think that they're important enough to get targeted. And the way most of these things come in is through automated systems or through social engineering. So. Again, they send out a mass email to 100,000 people, or they have a robot scanning networks online trying to find uh, liabilities or exploits, and then they just attack you automatically, and then you're, you're hooped. So again, it's not about whether or not you're important enough to get targeted. If you have a liability or an exploit that's available, these automated systems will target you anyways. So it's very important to make sure you're investing as little as $10 a month in a service like Backblaze or as much as $1,200 a month for a business continuity solution, which we will define and talk about later. So that's, that's pretty much it. Again, there's not a lot to go over uh, in this screen here. As you can see, number of data breaches is going up dramatically. This year, again, it looks like we're going up, I believe, 85% compared to 2019 already, and we're only six months of the way through the year. So um, I really, really, really recommend making sure that these things do not happen to your business. Please invest in a backup. It doesn't have to be through our company. It can be through Datto, it can be through Veeam, it can be through another IT provider. You can use OneDrive, you can use Google Drive, you can use Backblaze, you can use CrashPlan. There's so many options out there that we're gonna review later. Um, and there's no excuse anymore in the year 2020 to not be taking care of your digital backup online. I'm sure you have business insurance. It's time to make sure that your digital data is secure. So what makes a good backup? The objective of a proper backup is to protect the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability of your digital data. So what does that mean? It means that if your data is confidential, you need to make sure that it remains confidential. If you get a data breach and someone breaks into your main system, your backup should remain confidential. Your backup should be completely separated from your active data. If someone goes in and they mess up the integrity of your systems, you should again be able to go to your backup, find the uh, intact integral piece of data and restore it to replace the corrupted piece of data. Availability your data should be available at all times. If you have a hardware failure, you need to be able to immediately swap out that piece of hardware with a spare piece of hardware. If you have data that gets deleted or misplaced, you should be able to immediately start working off of your backup 
and begin working on that backup while your IT team or whoever's responsible for the backup starts restoring the data or discovering what went wrong using accountability. So you should have automatic backup alerts, you should have logs happening, um, you should know that the restores are happening. So in case you do have a problem, you can go to your IT team and say, when was the last time you tested our backups? Did you make sure that this is working, et cetera? And they should be able to tell you, yes, we've restored them last week. We do it every week on a weekly schedule like we do for our clients. We can make sure that the accountability is intact there. There's a person that's in charge of the backups. They're doing their job properly. When there's a problem that comes up, they're able to revert back to the backups, see where things went wrong, and make sure it doesn't happen again. So these are the four main components of having a good backup. It should maintain the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability of your data. So when we're talking about what should I back up, we recommend backing up information found in these locations. So again, devices, networks, and online accounts. So what I've done here is essentially listed out a bit of a checklist on what you can do to make sure that if something does happen, you're going to be able to restore your data in an expedited fashion, you're going to be able to recover your data in an expedited fashion, and you're going to be able to avoid data loss and avoid downtime. So looking at devices, I have file backups here. So this is something that OneDrive, Backblaze, CrashPlan, and Google Drive take care of. Um, you also have system image backups, which are very important. Um, System image backups are going to take a full system image backup for you. So what that means is that you're going to have the entire computer cloned. Um, your entire system is going to be cloned and put on site or off site. So if you have, I will use QuickBooks and Sage and as, as an example, because it's very straightforward. If you have Microsoft Word and you've configured it a specific way, you have your Outlook view set up a specific way. If you have your QuickBooks set up and you've got all of your databases and your library set up with QuickBooks and you've got your bookmarks in your browser all set up the way you like and your desktops a particular way and you've got a photo of the family there, um, it's really important that your IT team is able to not only restore the files on your computer, but that configuration very quickly, which is why we always recommend people use system image backups that you can search through to find the individual files instead of just using a file backup. Um, so if you have somebody that does a full system backup for your computer and you spill coffee on your laptop on a Monday morning or you lose your laptop or something bad happens to your workstation or the server goes down, etc., they're going to be able to just spin up that system image backup. In the case of your laptop, okay, drag the old laptop out of the back room, restore the system image, wait half an hour maybe, Here's your exact same computer, exactly as it was the last time this backup happened. You get to work, we're gonna work on your, your broken laptop and we're gonna give it back to you and we'll take the loaner back as soon as you're ready to work. That's the kind of system you wanna have in place. You don't wanna have a file backup where you've got all of your stuff in Google Drive or OneDrive and the only computer that you had is broken. Now you have to do a panic buy. Now you have to run to Best Buy, you have to run to uh, Memory Express, Canada Computers, whatever a local computer store is, you're going to have to run over there, you're going to have to set the computer up, download all your files onto this machine, you don't have any of your software yet, you don't have any of your settings configured, and it's going to take you hours and hours to get set back up, and all of a sudden it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you're just starting to get back to work, even though that happened at 9 in the morning. So it's very important to make sure that you're using full system image backups with proper policies in place. We also talked about, again here, redundant hardware. As I mentioned, you want to have a spare laptop in the back. You want to avoid single points of failure. So if you've got a server and it's your only server, consider getting it a sister server where you can configure high availability. So it'll back up to that sister server where if the original server goes down, the second server immediately picks up where the first server left off and no one will notice. You'll have maybe a 30 second outage and then you, your IT team will get a notification saying server one has failed, server two is now up and running and they can go in and work on server one or we can use the warranty and support function here. Dell, Lenovo, HP, whoever your vendor is can come in and swap out the dead parts in that server and get the initial server up and running again while the secondary server continues to allow your business to function. On-site and off-site backups are the other thing that I talked about. So again, if you get hit by ransomware, on-site backups will not help you. 
offsite backups are going to be the way to go. Um, if you have something that is active and constantly talking to your systems and they get hit by ransomware, everything is going to get taken down there. You need to have an offsite separate system. Looking at networks, uh, network configuration, we want to make sure that if you're not using cloud managed infrastructure, if you have an old switch in the back, you want to make sure that the network configuration is being backed up. If you have one switch powering your entire system, go ahead and buy a secondary switch just to keep in the back in case that thing fails. All of a sudden, no one can get online. Again, instead of having to wait up to a week to order in a new switch or having to run to Best Buy and, again, set something up that's going to be very slow and not provide the same level of service, um, you just, again, unbox something, plug it in, restore from your backup configuration, 15, 20 minutes later with a switch, you're back up and running. Um, same thing with redundant hardware, as I mentioned previously. And you can have that warranty and support. So as your redundant piece of hardware is continuing to do the job and your business is able to operate, the Lenovo, Dell, Cisco, whoever the vendor is, will be able to come in, swap out the dead piece of equipment, and then get you back to work as soon as possible. And another big thing I always see people kind of step over, um, although I'm not sure why, is internet failover connections. You can buy a DSL connection from TELUS or SHA, whoever the opposite provider is. If you use SHA, you should get a TELUS DSL connection. If you use TELUS, you should get a SHA DSL connection. I think they're as cheap as 10 to $15 a month. And if downtime tolerance is very low for your organization, that $10 a month, in case there's an internet outage, is going to keep your team running while SHA gets a, a cable cut. And it's gonna take them two weeks to get that up and running. Your business will still operate using the TELUS DSL system. So important to consider that as well. With your online accounts, you want to make sure that you are backing up your emails, contacts, calendars, personal file directories, shared file directories, and your website data. Um, you, though, that's essentially it for online accounts. Um, again, it's all online. You just have to make sure that the data is being backed up locally on your end because you are trusting companies like GoDaddy, WordPress, not necessarily WordPress, but whoever your hosting website is, um, Microsoft 365 and Google with your data. So it's very important to make sure that that stuff is getting backed up to a local place in case their, their infrastructure goes down. So I'm gonna slow down a little minute here. As you guys can see, I've had a little bit of coffee today, so I'm racing through this here. I don't wanna have another three hour seminar for everybody, but looking at the backup and disaster recovery checklist here, it's very important to consider these options when you're selecting your backup and disaster recovery solution. So if you're a small business, you've got five staff, maybe you're a solopreneur, you've got yourself and someone helping you out or just yourself, or if you're a giant corporation and there's 100 people in your association, I'm going to help you kind of make a decision here on, on what you need to consider. So I'm going to use a small firm to start off. Let's start with five people in your firm. Um, you're a small firm, pretty high downtime tolerance, I'm assuming. If we look at things first off, we'll look at the data storage. Looking at data storage, you can look at the amount of critical data that you have. So what data inside of your firm is absolutely critical? If you lose this data, are you done? If you lose your accounting records, if you lose your HR agreements, if you lose your legal agreements, um, if you have pertinent client data that you need to get backed up, etc. You need to identify the critical data that you have and make sure it gets backed up. The next thing that you need to look at is the frequency of your backups. How often are you going to back this data up? Because you're gonna to have to balance cost if you're a small firm, right? A small firm isn't gonna pay $1,200 a month for backups. They're gonna pay $10, maybe $100 tops. Um, so the frequency of your backups, is it a live backup? Is it gonna back up once a week? Is it gonna back up three times a day? How often is this software going to back your machine up? In the case of Backblaze that I mentioned earlier with the link in the description, that's gonna be a live backup. So as you're editing files, as you're moving things around, as you're, you're just doing, going about your business, um, it will continuously back your data up, which is fantastic. But if you're using other solutions like Jungle Disk, or you're using an old hard drive to do scheduled backups, that means that it's only gonna back up on a schedule. So if you lose a full day's worth of work, is that $10 a month worth it? That's kind of the question you have to ask yourself. Um, in terms of the data retention policy, this is another really important question I don't see people asking a lot. Um, when you pay for a solution like Datto, 
and you're paying them $1,200 or $1,500 a month, um, Datto is a business continuity uh, provider and a backup provider and a disaster recovery provider. Um, they offer dedicated hardware, cloud backups, bunch of stuff. When you're paying them $1,200 a month, you have to understand the amount of retention that they're offering you. So when they back your stuff up and they tell you you have an unlimited retention plan, is that stuff being backed up for an unlimited period of time? Or does that contract say that after three months, those three times a day backups are going to get cut down to once a month? So if six months from now, you're the type of business, maybe you're a personal injury firm, maybe you're a financial advisory firm, any sort of legal or professional service that needs to go back into your archives and pull data out and access that data, maybe something that deletes backups from three times a day to one time a month isn't going to be a good retention plan for you. Maybe you need something like Amazon's cloud solution that's going to give you infinite retention for 0 0.001 or 0 0.004 cents a gigabyte. So if you have absolutely critical data, like we mentioned before, client files, and you want to make sure that stuff is backed up off-site permanently forever, every edition of it, then maybe using something with a short retention policy is not going to be good for your business. It's something to consider. You also want to consider the location of backups. As I mentioned previously, if you're a Canadian business, you cannot use American service providers to back up critical data. If you have personal health records, if you have financial records, if you have confidential client information, you cannot use Google Drive, Backblaze, CrashPlan, and a number of other providers, Dropbox, that do not have Canadian server options. If your data is being stored in America, the 2004, I believe, Patriot Act enables the US government to subpoena that data. So if you have a client file and you're a lawyer, and you're keeping that data in American servers, and they get into a conflict in America, the states can pull that file without your permission. Um, they can look at that data at any time. It just requires a little bit of, of FISA warrant. We all know that law enforcement these days is not exactly doing their job as, as they should in a lot of cases, and that risk of corruption is there. So do not keep your data in American servers if you are a Canadian company and you are storing confidential critical information. Um, looking at the method of backups, you have on-site solutions and off-site solutions. So are you trying to protect yourself from ransomware? You need an off-site solution. Do you want to have something that you can restore from immediately when there's a problem? Use an on-site solution. Because if you have a laptop and you spill coffee on it, you don't want to wait six hours for your laptop backup to download from the cloud so you can restore it. You want to have an on-site solution that gets backed up to the cloud. That's why Datto and Veeam do such a good job because they're actually backing up your data locally and to the cloud simultaneously. So you're protected from ransomware and you're able to get super fast recovery times. So really important to make sure you're considering which of those is best for you. Again, maybe you're a super small business. Maybe there's only one person there. An $80 hard drive from Best Buy, that's going to be good enough for now. You know, you don't have $1,200 a month. You got 80 bucks one time. You plug that thing in every day. It does a full backup. You keep it in a drawer. It's good enough. You know, I don't recommend it, obviously, but I've been there. I started this business from a bedroom closet fixing phone screens. I had a shoestring budget. I totally get it. You got to do what you got to do. File backups versus full system backups. Again, if you're a super small business, maybe you can't afford to pay a Cronus $25 or $10 or, or whatever it is a month to do a full system backup. Maybe you just want to use the Windows system backup and it can back up to that hard drive for you and do a full system backup. The big question between file and full system backups essentially comes down to your downtime tolerance again. Um, so if you're doing a full system backup, again, you're going to be able to restore all of your settings and your configuration very quickly, but the cost is going to go up dramatically. Whereas if you're just sticking to file backups, it's going to be really quick, cheap, and easy to restore those files. If you lost a file or you need to access one file again, you can just pull that down from the cloud and access it very quickly. Um, so again, it's, it's just something to consider if you want to have file backups or full system backups or both. Um, something else to consider there. 
And again, the most important thing is your downtime tolerance. If you are a 75 person personal injury firm or a financial accounting firm, um, et cetera, you do not have a downtime tolerance. Um, I know some of our clients, if they go down, they're losing $200,000 an hour. Some people are working on multi-million dollar films. Some people are, are, we've had HBO and Scotiabank work with us before, and I've seen the backup solutions that their engineers have put in place, and there is zero downtime tolerance. If things, if things go down, there is a clone system, a failover system, ready to start up as soon as the initial things go down. So if you're a bigger business, I recommend anything about 15 staff you should have a cloud hybrid solution in place. So if your server goes down, your business does not notice. Because if you're paying 15 people full-time salaries and they're all out of work for three days while your IT gets things back up and running, that is gonna be a terrible cost uh, impact on your business, especially for your reputability. It's gonna hurt a lot of aspects. So it's really good to invest in something as cheap as $99 a month that Datto offers. Um, where you're or Veeam, which is free software that you're able to host yourself, and then you can pay a separate cloud provider, like I mentioned Amazon previously, um, as little as 0.001 gigs uh, cents uh, per gig. So, downtime tolerance is very, very important. If you're a small business, it's not really going to justify the cost because maybe it's just you. You can go do other stuff. You can see clients. You can send out emails from your other computer. Maybe your phone is good enough. Whatever. Uh, but make sure you're considering these aspects before you move on. So looking at policies, um, these are the policies that I usually recommend uh, people follow if they're not going to be working with a company like ours. Um, you want to have a 3 to one policy in place, so I talk about this all the time. That means your data is in three different places across two different vendors, one of those vendors being completely off-site and separate from your active data. So for example, three locations, we've got Microsoft 365's OneDrive or SharePoint. I've got it on my computer at home and I've got it backed up to Veeam, or I've got it backed up to Datto, or I've got it backed up to Acronis, or I've got it backed up to CrashPlan, or I've got it backed up wherever. Um, what's important is that I've got it in those three places, and I've got my standalone cold storage that's not actively um, interacting with my data. When I change something, it doesn't instantly change over on the backup. You need to assign responsibility inside of your association. So again, if you're not working with an IT provider, you're too small to have an IT guy, or it's just not in the budget, um, whoever it is that's responsible for this solution inside of your business needs to be responsible for it. They need to understand that. They need to be checking up on this on a schedule because I've seen this a million times. Data loss happens or something just goes wrong and, and there's no accountability in the organization and everyone just does this thing where it's someone else's fault, it was him, it was her, it wasn't me. And it's very important to make sure that one person in your association understands you are responsible for backups, you are responsible for the disaster recovery, you are responsible for the business continuity solution here. That way, whenever something does go wrong, they can lead the way, they can solve things quickly, they can calm everyone down, we've got a captain for the ship, they've got a plan, and they can move ahead. So you also need to determine unique threats for your business. So again, a law firm versus an art studio, going to be a little bit different data there going to be a different client base, going to be different threats. So you have to understand as a law firm, it's very unlikely that you're going to be painting a mural and you're going to knock a thing of paint onto your laptop. As an, as a, uh, as an art firm, it's probably more likely that you're going to have break-ins than a law firm. Um, some people might break into your business more. Um, there's a lot of different liabilities that you need to con uh, consider and just have a little think about your business, your location, the type of clients you have, um, do you have sensitive data if you're a mortgage broker? It, are you a big target for people who are going to be going after you for identity theft? Lots of stuff like that to consider. You also need to, again, identify your critical data and resources. Very important to make sure you know what you're backing up and where it's going. Make sure that you're specifying a backup solution. So again, if you're going to use CrashPlan, Backblaze, Datto, IT Provider X, whatever. Uh, legal, legal and compliance requirements. So again, if you're a financial advisory firm or a law firm, you need to store your data in Canada for seven uh, years. It needs to make, you need to make sure that it is uh, confidential and uh, the integrity is being uh, kept in place. It's available at all times and the accountability of the data is also in place. You need to have an audit log of everything that happens to the data. So there are a lot of different legal and compliance requirements based on your industry and your organization independently. 
Um, we are happy to assist with that. I will be putting out different uh, resources fairly shortly where it actually breaks that down for the major industries in Canada. Um, and if you are someone in a particular industry and you don't know what requirements apply to your business, please just send me a DM and uh, I'm happy to give you my little bullet points and just say, hey, you got to keep this in mind, keep that in mind, whatever. Um, so just leave a comment below, email us at techtips at umbrellaitservices.ca and I can help you out with that. Uh, you can also schedule recovery from backup. So um, it's very important to make sure that your backup is being tested. We do this weekly. So we have all of our backups for our clients restore once a week. We're able to see that they're working. <clears throat> We're able to audit those and make sure that the backups actually work. Because I've seen a lot of IT companies where we go in to clean up a mess that happened. And then we go, when was the last time you tested this backup before they got hit by this ransomware? And they go, testing backups? But it's a backup. It's supposed to work. And that's not the right attitude. It's very important to make sure your stuff is getting backed up at all times. Also, regularly review your recovery procedures. The same way the fire department or a school does fire drills, you should do recovery procedure drills. Doesn't mean you need to have someone running through the office banging pots and pans going, everything's on fire, we gotta do a backup recovery. But it does mean that they should say, okay, what happens once a month? What happens if someone breaks their laptop or goes missing? What do I do? What happens if the network goes down? What happens if Microsoft 365 goes down? And they just have a few simple steps. They're able to go, okay, so step one, if my laptop goes down, go into the back room, get the spare laptop. Step two, plug in the USB stick and boot from that. Step three, start the restore process. Step four, I'm done. So it's very important to make sure that people know what's going on when there's a crisis like this happening, um, especially for key people in your association, like a CEO or even a, a, an administrative assistant. Everyone in the organization, depending on their downtime tolerance individually, should have their own recovery procedure. I think that's basically it with this. Um, yeah, I'd highly recommend that you, you take this screenshot here and make sure you're considering all of these uh, before you go ahead and pick a solution for your business. So now I really want to just kind of dive into what are the main distinctions between these options, um, just so people kind of understand what the main uh, fact factors are when you're kind of choosing one of these. So it gets more expensive the further we go to the right here, um, but for, for good reason. So traditional backups, again, most people that we work with or we do consultants for uh, or do consulting sessions with, sorry, uh, use traditional backups. They don't use disaster recovery solutions and they don't use business continuity solutions. So a traditional backup, again, you don't really have a lot of downtime tolerance. So you might be down for a week or two if you just use a traditional backup because, again, you're paying Dropbox 10 bucks a month and your stuff's up in Dropbox and it's good enough. It's in Dropbox. It's backed up. Or, hey, we've got this hard drive from six years ago that's been plugged into the server and covered in dust, and it's backing everything up, so that's that's good. Um, and then you just have a backup in place where it's either going on-site, it's going off-site, it's doing a full system backup or a file backup, and, and that's it. You just set it, you forget it, don't really think about it, and it's there. It's cheap, it works, does the job, and people are usually happy with that, but... They don't think about the next couple steps there of what happens if data loss occurs or if downtime occurs. So that's kind of where these other two options come in. So a disaster recovery solution builds off of a traditional backup and all it does is it gives you more detail and insight onto how to resolve downtime or data loss when they occur. So this can use a number of factors, so on-site backups, off-site backups, um, administrative policies, recovery procedures, low downtime tolerance, etc. So the low downtime tolerance because you're going to get up and running in half an hour if you're using a disaster recovery solution versus if you're using a traditional backup, which may take days. So a disaster recovery solution is just a solution to help you recover from disaster. It's very straightforward. So again, laptop, coffee gets spilled on it. We use a traditional backup. Let's say we're backing all the computer's files up to Dropbox. We now have to go to Best Buy, buy a computer, bring it back to the office, turn it on, set it up, sign into your Dropbox, all your files start to download, you're back up and running probably two to three hours, specific, eh, probably longer than that. Anyways, it's going to take you a whole afternoon to get back up and running with a traditional backup. If you had a disaster recovery solution for your laptop, you would go into the back room, take out the laptop, 
restore from the system image or restore from the file image, whichever one that you preferred, and your stuff is going to be back up and running in a half hour. So it's a big difference, and the only thing that we would have had to do in cost comparison is keep an on-site backup of the computer instead of just a Dropbox solution. So again, $80 for a hard drive, mm, Veeam is free, so an extra 80 bucks one time, and you have a disaster recovery solution for your laptop. If you're looking at something like a server, this is even, this is even bigger. Um, if you have a file server go down or a printer server go down or something like that, and you have a backup of it, in most cases, again, you're gonna have it on a hard drive. You're gonna have to order in equipment for that server. You're gonna have to call Dell or Lenovo for that server to come in and get a warranty support if you got that. Um, and that's about it. You're gonna have to wait at least a day to get things up and running. But if we had a disaster recovery solution, again, you pull out the spare server from the back room, you restore to it, a couple of hours later, you're back up and running. Now looking at business continuity, this is what we recommend for everybody nowadays. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're a small business or a big business. Again, 100 bucks a month is as cheap as you can get these. And again, Veeam is free, so it's just the cost of the data being backed up, which can be more expensive, more of a hassle. The IT labor costs involved can be much more expensive, so we recommend most folks go with a company like ours that offers their own backup solution or a company like Datto that a company like ours can resell to you. Um, they offer fantastic business continuity solutions. So business continuity means that your business can continue to operate when a disaster affects you. Again, very simple. So if your server goes down, the business continuity solution immediately kicks in. You immediately begin working off of the backup, the business continuity solution, without any downtime or data loss. It's a fantastic solution. We've seen data work for some of our clients in less than 15 minutes. We've had an entire firm go down, 50 plus people, unable to work. No one even files a ticket with us. They don't even know that there was a problem. The server completely crashed. The backup solution kicked in immediately. Everything was totally fine. They had no idea. We fixed the backup in the meantime. We let the administrative staff know we had a server failure because X, Y, Z. They understand what the problem was. We worked to resolve it, make sure it doesn't happen again. Everyone continues working as previously mentioned. So in order to get something for a small business with 15 people or less, that's going to be 99 bucks a month from, from a provider like Datto. And it goes up to as much as $1,500, $2,800 a month. I've seen a bunch of different numbers um, that come in with business continuity solutions. So if you are someone that's concerned about the downtime for your business and you can afford to spend $100 a month, I highly recommend that you start looking at something like a Cronus if you want to go your own way with this and you want to get your own solution in place. A Cronus, A-C-R-O-N-I-S, is a great solution for small businesses that want to have some form of business continuity without having to spend an exorbitant amount of money every month or have an IT provider get involved. Um, and if you want to have an IT provider involved, we're always happy to do free consultations. I'm sure there's a million companies in your area that provide the similar sort of solutions. So really, really focus on getting your business away from traditional backups and at the bare minimum have a disaster recovery solution for every sort of issue that we described previously in the liabilities and make sure that if something does go wrong with your business, you're going to be able to continue functioning while things get fixed by your IT team. So. Looking at a business continuity solution, again, cloud hybrid, what that means is that there's an on-site system. So again, if your server goes down, that server is being backed up to a box on-site, and that box on-site is being backed up to the cloud. So if you get hit by ransomware, you just work off of the cloud. Everyone just signs into the cloud, and they start working off the cloud while the server gets restored. Very simple. If you have something like a fire that happens in your business, you work off the cloud. If something goes wrong where a local laptop breaks, then you work off the on-site box. Again, very straightforward. Um, you want to make sure that administrative policies, recovery procedures are in place. Again, so that when something does go wrong, there's notifications to administrative staff, regular staff know what's going on, etc. Um, but a business continuity solution, uh, these are getting more affordable every year and they have absolutely zero downtime tolerance. If you are a business where your boss will lose their mind if they can't work for a couple of hours because a file went missing or the server's down or they spilled la uh, coffee on their laptop or their kids stepped on the screen last night, you need to have disaster recovery solutions and a business continuity solution in place. So um, I'm going to just jump over now to the... 
demo here of how you can use OneDrive and Google Drive to back up your computer. So we'll go ahead and do a quick Teams call here. I am using Mac OS, so I wanted to show everybody how to do this on a Windows computer. So I'm just going ahead and calling myself here. And we'll go ahead and accept the screen share. And there we go. So in a typical Windows environment, let me make sure this is working. Okay, yeah, looks good. So in a typical Windows environment, let's say that you want to back up your computer and you wanna make sure that all of your files are gonna get backed up again. This is a free way to do this. This is probably already happening um, for many, many different people um, and you wanna make sure that um, your files are secure. Again, you're already paying for this most likely. This is just a really easy way to make sure that your files are backed up somewhere else so that if you do get hacked or something happens, you're not going to be left with absolutely nothing. Um, so what you want to do is install Google uh, Drive Backup and Sync. I'm at step two here. I've already signed in. And you can see here immediately, as soon as I download Google Drive Backup and Sync, it says my laptop, I want to back up my desktop, my documents, and my pictures. That's it. I can choose that. I'm good to go. I can go here and click choose folder. And then I can go ahead and choose any folder that I want to have backed up. And that's immediately going to allow me to back up those different folders. And they're safe. So again, for Google Drive, very simple. Install backup and sync, sign into your account, back up your data, done. Now if we look at OneDrive, I've already got my OneDrive installed here. So what I'm going to be able to do is click on this, go to the more button, go over to settings. I can go over to the backup option here and then I can select manage backup. And again, same thing, desktop, documents and pictures. Very straightforward. I click start backup. All my files are going to get backed up immediately. It really is that simple with these two programs. Most people are using these automatically. And if you use a program like Backblaze, like myself, um, I use that for my personal machine because I have a lot of drone footage. I have a lot of other files that I want to have backed up off-site. Backblaze is 10 bucks a month flat for me. Um, so I use Backblaze to back up my personal information. Um, yeah, so that is essentially it. I know today's a very complex topic. Um, I hope that this broke it down for you guys a little bit. I'm just going to hop off of this here. And we will go back over to our solutions. And yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, now would be the time to let us know in the chat. But I think as usual, we're good to go. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in today. Um, I'm glad we were able to cover things like a data liability, what that means for different pieces of your infrastructure, um, different data backup principles to make sure that your data is going to stay safe when it is backed up and you don't have a false sense of security with backups. Um, I'm very happy we were also able to give you guys the backup and disaster recovery checklist. I'll go ahead and post that on our social stuff right after this. And I'm happy I was able to show you guys how easy it is to use OneDrive and Google Drive to back up the files on your computer. Again, very important to make sure you're using a system like Acronis, Veeam, Datto, IT Company X to back up the system images of your machines. But just as a very basic setup, make sure you're using OneDrive, Google Drive, Backblaze, or Jungle Disk to back up your system's files. That way, if anything does go wrong, you don't have to start from scratch. I've seen that happen to a lot of businesses, and they've had to spend a lot of money to different ransomware people to get their data back. It's not good. Um, so yeah, if you could like, uh, leave a like on the video, it really helps me out. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. And if you have a suggestion for a future video the way that our friend Brittany did with this topic, uh, please leave a comment below or email us at techtips at umbrellaitservices.ca. I hope you all have a very fantastic weekend, and I will see you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.